Hi all. Evening all, welcome to another King's Russia radio show. So this is Tuesday around 10 past 9. I uh, thought we could carry on looking at the best of the best. Chess game's gone best of the best. Uh, so the years now between 19... Uh, 100 and 1909. Um, so this is one of the games Marshall against Campoblanca. Let's have a look at this game. Okay, so d4 from Marshall. And actually, let's take it from Campoblanca's uh, perspective, actually. So d5, classical reply from Campoblanca. Actually, let's connect to Livebook and add a kibitzer as well, just in case we come across very technical positions. So, or technical. So c4 from Marshall, e6, pretty classical. We get now a Tarash. So Campoblanca playing a Tarash defense. This can uh, lead, of course, to an isolated queen's pawn. C takes, e takes, knight f3, knight c6. And Marshall plays uh, g3. Oh, better turn off some extras. I was just streaming earlier. Better turn them off. Pardon me. Okay, so um, this this is very popular against the Tarash. Bishop e6. And uh, let's reduce the number of lines here. Bishop g2. Bishop e7. I think white's fine so far. He has a good opening. Bishop g5. Now knight e4, so that hitting that bishop. Uh, bishop takes e7, queen takes. We have knight e5. Knight takes d4, some simplification here. Knight takes e3. We go into a kind of very well, quite simplified position now. So out of the opening, basically, black has a 3 to 2 pawn majority. Uh, so white's got, in theory, an extra pawn over here, of course, 4 to 3. So I think this game was instructive, is instructive to look at, because how to exploit the pawn majority here from the opening. Uh, so black castles, and now we have rook ab8. Let's have a quick look. Uh, if I think it was too risky to take here. Sorry, black castles. Was it? It was too risky to take here because I think black just gets some counterplay there, getting that b2 pawn after. So I think uh, there was no point in doing that. That would be slightly uh, more active rooks. Okay, so um, yeah, rook fc1. So black does protect the pawn now from the glare of this queen e4. Does block that extra pawn if white's going to try and use his pawn majority. Uh, it's um, it's blocked at the moment. Queen c7. Rook c3. Now b5. This kind of is in a way a, a tempo gainer potentially for these pawns once they start rolling. a3 c4. So yeah, if black gets He's got natural support for the pawn. If he gets in b4, he's going to be creating a passed pawn already. Bishop f3. Rook fd8. That looks quite menacing to have that file, actually, because there is an entry point here on d2. Rook d2 is actually quite a menacing threat uh, that needs to be addressed in this position. And uh, white does so, perhaps mm, maybe not the absolute best way. Uh, it's it's a tricky position already when black's doing great um, but he plays rook d1 so we get some further simplification but the pawn majority is just there lurking it's just it's just waiting uh, bishop f3 the back row is secured tactically just in case there's any tricks on the back row later queen c6 now here, actually, you might think Campoblanca would take on c6 here. 
Uh, this this is quite uh, in interesting. Uh, if he takes on c6, it's, it is dangerous. Um, black black can actually play bishop h3 to try and uh, go for a mate. And actually, this this position is okay for black. It's quite good for black. It's plausible to do that. But actually, there was there was another move played in the position. Black's position was already really good. But I think this is actually a more uh, incisive. Uh, move here yeah it's it's a more incisive move played in this position at move 24 okay so uh, black black to play here uh, hi, hi on stream um, so what would you play with black here it is very very tempting and good actually to play that is a good move but apparently what Kevin Bank played um, is is stronger than Queen takes C6. Uh, so I'll give you 20 seconds on stream there. Uh, what What do you think about this position? Hmm. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Rook d1 is te technically possible, yeah. You know, because if it takes the net, uh, and actually you're right. It, it's actually a good move. Uh, it can still lead to the same thing. Uh, the resource that I mentioned it after King g2. Um, basically, the the resource is um, can either be played first with Rook d1 or immediately. So Queen e5. Well done if you got this. So what's the idea? Well, one idea is rook d2 is more painful for white because uh, we're on uh, b2, so the rook would be like hanging after. It does also protect uh, the b5 pawn. If black has an extra move, you play rook d2. Uh, so this is very, very tricky. So white challenges the queen immediately. I'm not sure what else there is to do. Let's imagine king g2, rook d2 very uncomfortable here uh, let's imagine this position check taking I think actually um, mm, no, I thought the idea was rook b2 but actually there's a lot apparently there's a lot of other Ideas. I think I think rook takes b2 is fine. That that is a really strong move anyway. It it's just knocking out the rook. If white has to exchange off queens, yeah, white's white's just worse. Uh, rook b losing anyway. Uh, there's two connected pass pawns here. That's enough to show uh, a win anyway. Okay, so um, but uh, white's heading that way. After in any case, this pawn majority is getting uh, accentuated. Check a5. So it's like a ready made pawn majority uh, the pass pawns there's a pass pawn to be generated soon from this pawn majority bishop f3 hitting the rook okay bishop e2 we have b3 now rook d2 rook c1 uh, so there's a certain elegance here rook c2 is immediately threatened now that's parried C3 now, just creating a, a winning passed pawn, and that really is it. After after getting a piece up, it's pretty much technique here. Yeah, black's just a piece up with the extra bishop. Uh, this this is not very good. It's all over pretty pretty much, and to get. Uh, a mating net woven actually. There's a mating net to be woven here, or like this, uh, with rook h5. Uh, so white uh, resigned there. So this game was played uh, in New York in 1909. Uh, it was it was favoured by quite a lot of uh, people on on chess games. Comment. It does have a certain elegance to it that there's a visual like asset from the opening the pawn majority. 
Uh, so actually, actually, I think the reason why uh, people are very fond of it, it's it's kind of a classic. Yes, it's a classic example of of using a pool majority. If we just go back to the position uh, out of the opening. Well, we can see from the opening this this is occurring. I mean, it's basically this position. It's it's a classic example how to exploit a pool majority here. What Black did. But uh, actually, you know, even this, you might think this is like theoret very theoretical, but actually, it's Queen e5 is actually quite uh, a tactical kind of move. So, um, yeah, it it just shows it shows a, an example of the pool majority from the opening. It it was very well exploited. Well, I, I hope you found that instructive. Anyway. Uh, so he he made things look quite easy sometimes, and he, also his opponent, you know, is very tactical. He, he knew there were no tactics basically. It was just uh, based on the pawn structure f f uh, after the opening. Uh, just a very very logical game. Yeah, let's see that again. Just fast forward it here. So just pushing the pawns, generating the pass pawn. That was threatening rook c2 generating. And that, that's winning then. On bishop c2, by the way, there's uh, well, we can just queen. There's, there's, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's have a look at another game from um, that era. Marshall against Laska. Yeah, there's a lot of Marshall games that have been uh, favorited in the, in the top ten of that time. Marshall against Laska. So th this was in the Laska Marshall World Championship match in 1907. Let's have a look from Laska's point of view. Okay, so so Las Laska was black. We have um, this Berlin defence. About d4 for Marshall. He spiced it up with this gambit. Okay, so knight f5, yeah, very interesting play. He is moving a piece a few times. This knight f5 up to no good. <laughs> Black plays d5, hitting the knight, as you might expect. Bishop takes. Now he's hitting d5 actually, so Black just took here. Knight takes. Queen takes. Yes. Okay, I think this is about equal so far. Rookie one, Queen H four. Right, that's protected. F six, trying to open that F file. F three. Now here, actually, things get. Uh, quite interesting. Yeah, Alaska sometimes plays super clinical moves, and I think this is one of them as an example. Uh, it, yeah, there's a very very interesting move to play here. So you know, black black to play here. What, what do you reckon uh, Alaska played in this position? Any ideas? Mm. Yes. Yes, if you got this right, good, good. F takes just sucking a piece here, so he's spotted this sensitive f two square. This coordinated f two square. So we have a problem here after d four. Is this bishop going to be forced to ne neglect this square? Perhaps white should play queen e two or queen d two, and apparently white should be okay. White should be okay. 
just giving the piece back. But uh, what he played was um, actually G3. It's a little bit more dangerous now. Not giving the piece back. Queen F6. It's here actually. He gives the piece back with Bishop takes D4. That's interesting. Perhaps better is Bishop D2 allowing the check. If this is fatal, let's just check. Nearly fatal. But is there a knockout blow in this position? Might not be. <clears throat> White's position looks pretty awkward though. If, if he has to play moves like knight a3, this looks ridiculous. Uh, is white actually is resting queen takes in the earlier position by the way here in this variation if taking can you spot a good tactic for black in this position what would you play in this position Ch testing the tactics I hope you can spot it instantly a good tactic in this position it's just a variation So anyway, uh, so Bishop D2, um, you know, might be plausible, but it looks crazy to allow this Queen F2. So Bishop takes D4 was played, and now Rook F1, and we get simplification. Queen takes, takes Rook B8. So, yeah. <laughs> these two games together I don't know Paul Lasker is is in in here for the wrong reasons in these two games it seems is he going to get outplayed in this end game so b3 rook b5 threatens now rook c5 so that's energetic uh, so if there's I don't think there's any time for knight d2 because rook c5 is annoying and then there's bishop a6 so uh, c4 and now uh, rook b6 is interesting but he plays actually rook h5 that's energetic and now c5 which means the bishop can protect it past pawn here as well gets the king up to the center now, the rook can majestically probe for weaknesses here which it does Bishop g4 is this bishop stronger than the knight let's see king e6 the king is heading for a nice square here king hasn't got access to f3 so this isolated pawn poor isolated pawn past pawn is pushed king infiltrates okay rooks come off so it seems uh frank marshall is on the wrong end here of this uh, c6 is white going to be in Zugzwang soon yeah he looks to be uh, in a very very bad state the knight can't move without dropping the pawn yes it looks very Zugzwangy all of a sudden in fact he does move his knight if he moves his king uh, just king either e3 or c3 okay so knight b1 that drops bishop e2 and again there looks to be only short-term resistance there's another zogzwang surely coming up or white white's uh, just losing all the pawns here yep f3 for f2 uh, this is just a winning pass pawn with the knight there uh, so if um, if takes sorry uh, white took here if, if he took this sorry it's an illegal move for some reason I'm not looking 
that's why but anyway f3 f2 sorry white took on c5 uh f3 so now threatening f2 check check and yeah it looks as though okay uh why can only be tricky here uh is this a little trick or not really i mean it's everything's winning really uh, he plays c5 b4 that's taken b3 and okay i mean there's a tactic here which no there's not even a tactic here which is needed just king g3 uh is the tactic which uh, well f f2 now for f1 uh knight e3 the knight's kind of overloaded just b2 so this was in the uh laska marshall world championship match of 1907 so I, I think the game stood out in that match because of the uh peace sacrifice in the opening uh yeah so once bear in mind maybe yeah uh, okay so Marshall uh, yeah that was <laughs> believe it or not that those two Marshall games were were on this best of the best list so don't blame me if you found them boring no they, they were interesting they were grinds Marshall was a great attacking player but sometimes he lost against the better players in he was just ground down well you know <laughs> he was he was the US champion for a number of years um, yeah so okay let's have a look at now the 10th one to have a look at uh, from that era <clears throat> Carl Slatter against Walter John d4 c4 of a Dutch defense and you know with the stone wall there, there is a lot of dark square weaknesses clearly uh, okay so we have e3 not minding the swap here this will also of course mean later you know this e file this is a good outpost square good frontal pressure on e6 so doubling the pawns here is is favoring white uh, so that was ignored in fact g3 now was played he could have just taken on d6 as well okay now black took here e takes so there's this potential frontal pressure if, when this knight's kicked later with f3 uh, that should be a bit weak knight e5 actually it's just snapped off here and we get a position almost like dead looking position for black here while it's crawling all over the dark squares dancing on the dark squares here and actually he plays uh, c5 getting a exaggerated grip on the dark squares maybe a bit overkill and now this is like an attack is brewing up yeah there's, there's an attack brewing up first thing mate in one more dark square weaknesses of course so they're all around the shop all of these dark square weaknesses they're all around the shop okay and white plays on the queen side now but here this knight's heading for a, a very juicy dark square potentially maybe with stuff like this so let's have a look yes sealing some juicy dark squares so there's three dark squares that are pretty juicy here these three not so juicy well you might find that interesting uh, so here knight g4 check okay so blacks just totally you know position he's strangled here I mean 
<laughs> who who the hell is Walter John? So who the hell is Walter John? So is that is that your question? Sorry, I I, I think I'm preempting. Why why am I showing you this game? So black is just positioning murdered. Walter Walt John, hang on. Who is Walter John? Okay, hang on a sec. Here's some bio. Uh, maybe I should have done the bio earlier. Uh, uh, Walter John was born in Fawn. He moved to Berlin where he died in 1940. Uh, he was a pharmacist by profession. He was the runner up in the 1902 tournament, the Cafe Kirkou, right behind Kurt von Baderborn. Uh, John won the main tournament, the 13th German Chess Congress in Hanover. Yes, he actually he actually won a tournament once in Hanover. He drew a match against Jack Mises in Leipzig, 1917. So 12 years later, he drew a match with someone really good. Uh, and there's a there's actually a, a a wiki article for Walter John. So this is not some total anonymous bunny. Okay, but Carl, Carl Schletter is is more well known. Uh, Carl Schletter was definitely one of the better players in the world at the time he, I mean definitely you know one of the better players uh, so yeah a very very big bio uh, by contrast which I'm not going to read here so anyway just in case you're wondering okay so Queen D8 <laughs> so it looks as though white can torture black in <laughs> in any way you know whatsoever I mean he, you can probably go on to all of these key dark squares as well soon, yeah? I mean, why not? He does, in fact, go on to e5 and f6 pretty soon. Well, f6 is tempting. Yes, even f6 doesn't mind the exchange of queens here, funny enough. Okay, we have a picturesque position of dark square occupation and control. The rooks double ominously. There's not much for black to do. We have a pass pawn now. Check. And the knight goes to a magnificent e5 square. So threatening f7 check. So that's parried with rook d8 for the moment. Ah, king g2, h4. This is now ominous because h5 might be uh, on the cards. Well, among other things, uh, maybe. Uh, king f3, king f4. Actually, rook b1 now threatens b5. You know, the break for over here. <laughs> okay, b5. And <laughs> black resigned. Now, I have no idea why this game. <laughs> <laughs> is in the top 10 but it is don't blame me it's in, statistically this game came up as one of the best games of that period for some reason i guess it was a nice demonstration of dark squares being weak yeah and not to play the stone wall this must have put people off this dutch stone wall formation uh, maybe it's of great historical importance why people didn't play the stone wall too much because of this game <laughs> maybe just, it was a horror story so it was only later people started using the Dutch stone wall again. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just completely lost here, right? But let's let's have a look. If the game continued. Uh I mean it looks as though you know where, where's you know black's just gonna lose material here, yeah. yeah? Okay, there's, there's no point looking anymore at that. Okay, so yes, yes, these were the free games. I, I, I sometimes just can't, just completeness, just going over. Don't blame me. These, if you found these games dry. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this session in, or found them instructive in some way. Uh, they, they were all instructive in their own right. Uh, the Capablanca game, just to recap, just to put these at the back of the mind. The Capablanca game was a classic exploitation of a pawn majority. Uh, the second game was a nice peace sack leading to a kind of probing position with the rook, you know, uh, Lasker probing uh, Marshall and, and creating a passport and Zugzwang. And this, this third one, obviously, Dark Square domination from Carl Slatter. So, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, okay, uh, all likes appreciated. And see you next week. Okay, thanks very much.